Today, you will learn how to turn this boring 360 virtual tour photo of my house into this expensive royal palace. What? All this 360 photo captured in Ibiza, Spain, into this 360 photo of old Tokyo. What? Straight out of a Miyazaki animated film. Look, I turned these two tourists into two Japanese schoolgirls. The BMW into this old Japanese car and this bush into kimchi. Wait, what? These two 260 photos have the identical feature but completely different styles, different countries, really. So, how did I do that? With the power of AI. This masterclass is built up on my first mini tutorial on how to use AI text prompt to generate 360 photos with Blockage Labs AI. You will learn how to have full control of AI using that map to shape a 360 photo into a style you want. We will cover stable diffusion, control net, LoRa and advanced AI in painting techniques to create the exact image based on your virtual tool client's requirements and specs. We will bring the power of AI into your hands so you have full control of AI as an artist, creator, or photographer. You will start as a complete AI art beginner and learn to install and master all the new tools you need to create your 360 immersive art on Facebook 360, interactive virtual tool platforms, or inside your VR headset. Let's go! Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here, back on another AI tutorial on 360 Photo Virtual Tour or Immersive Content Creation. If you don't know how to use Blockage Lab AI to generate 360 photo, check out my first tutorial short right here. The problem with a simple text to 360 photo tour like the Blockage is that you don't really have any control of your AI art generation. You can use it for fun, but not on professional level works or immersive art generation. You cannot call yourself a true artist if AI is doing all the art for you and you have no control whatsoever. You can use one of these camera to capture 360 photo, and then you can use those photo as model, 3D maps, or that map to generate beautiful art with full artistic control. You can skip the next part if you already know how to capture 360 photo. But if you come from the AI world, let me demo you how easy to capture 360 photo of your own instead of borrowing somebody else from the internet. So what you need first is a consumer 360 camera. Like right here, I have the Insta360 X3. You can also use the one s one inch, Rico Theta Z1, X Cool Cam, GoPro Max, any 360 camera that are capable to capture 4K and above to see photo will be good enough. So second thing you will need is a monopod or an invisible selfie stick that usually come with a camera purchase. Another piece of gear I think is very essential to have, especially if you want to have a really high quality 360 photo. What I mean high quality is the scene is evenly lit so you can correctly measure all the depth information and bring into AI to figure out the depth information. So lighting is very important. I think it's also very important for just traditional 360 virtual tour. So here is my setup for my consumer one-shot camera. What I have right here is the brand new, let me show you, the brand new Zhi Yun M40 panel light. This light is so powerful. This little tiny little light right here can give out 40 watt of light. Let me just show you. With the panel light, give out even light. There's a soft spot actually right here. That's why it looks so funky. It's a soft spot right here to give out even light to light up the scene behind me. This is without. So how I rig them together to have the minimal footprint is with the u z right here. The metal cage have a top hot shoot mount and then we can mount the light vertically on top of the hot suit. Let me show you the side profile of the light. It's very minimum. 
the top line is almost not there. Yeah, you can still see a little bit, but you will need to remove that in post anyway for the seating. So what if, if both sides also really dark and you need to light both sides? So you can capture one side first and then for this light have a special design. Let me just show you. Like right there, you can flip it. It's kind of hard to do it in just one hand. Let me try to do it in one hand. Now I light the other side. I take a second picture and, and immerse them in post so you got an evenly lit full 260 scene. So to add on top of that, I also had a brand new Ziyun Fireway F100 right here. This little stick light give out 100 watt of power. Let me show you real quick. Is how crazy this thing is. Let me hit this button. Boom! Now give out 100 watt of power. It lit up the entire scene behind me like easily. So what I usually do is because this is a stick light. So what I do is I have. Let me see what I have right here. Right here, a salt box. You can just wrap around the barn door right here. Now we give out very even light. Look at that. I can turn back on maximal. It's maximal. And what I gotta do is I usually pull it underneath the 360 camera. So now the scene will give out. Let me turn this on as well. So now the scene will give your talent or your scene top lid and bottom lid right now, right there. Let me just turn it around. See how powerful that thing is. We'll give you a top lid and bottom lid to make sure that your scene you're trying to film is evenly lit and that's very important to generate depth for AI. This masterclass assume you know nothing about AI. If you already installed it, Stable Diffusion, Control Net, VAE, and LoRa and configured it to fully utilize your GPU with max speed render using Xformers, you can skip this part and jump to the time code right here. For the rest of you, I will teach you how to install Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 Web UI on PC with NVIDIA GPU under three minutes. Let's go! First, install Python. All the links are down in the description down below. Next, download and install Git. Just follow the default instruction. Then go to Automatic 11.11 GitHub page and copy this code right here. Create a folder in your C drive or your system drive for stable diffusion. Don't use an external drive with an older file system. Your installation will fail. Just use your system C drive for the fastest, most reliable, painless installation. In that folder, click the edges bar and type in CMD and hit enter and go into command prompt. Paste that code you just copy and hit enter. When the code is finished, it create stable diffusion dash web UI folder under that folder. Go into that and go into the models folder. We need to download some checkpoint model into stable dash diffusion folders. Go to this link right here, create a free account on Hugging Face, and then go to the tab file and version and download the smaller EMA only checkpoint file into your models. Stable Diffusion folder right here. Now go back to the Stable Diffusion web UI folder, right click and edit the web UI user.bat file with the text editor. If you are a developer, you will have multiple versions of Python. You need to set the Python path to the one you just installed it, the 3.10.6 version. Make sure put the path in quotation mark. Most people forgot the quotation mark and see error. Next, in the command line dash args, type in exactly that space that dash xformers. This line make your stable diffusion render 10x time faster if you have RTX 30 series or RTX 40 series GPU. Then right here, type in git pull to enable automatic update every time you open the web UI. So you can set it and forget about it. Now, save the text file and close it. Now double click the web UI dash user dot bat and let the download to finish. It took my two gig internet like half an hour to finish out all the file. So go play some VR game and come back. Now the download is finished. Copy this URL and open a browser and paste the URL in. Here is the automatic 11.11 web UI for stable diffusion. Next, let's learn how to install ControlNet. 
Go to this URL and copy the address. Go back to your automatic 11.11 web UI. Click on extension, install from URL, paste the URL right here, hit install. Go back to the install it and hit apply and restart the UI. Now go to this URL and download the control net models. We will only need the dev for this tutorial, but I highly recommend using multiple control net to combine Kenny, MSLD, and open post to create next level AI image with full control. So download all of them into your extension folder, sd-webui-controlnet models. Put all your downloads model right here. Next, let's learn how to install LoRa. Go back to the web UI, extension, available, load form. Scroll down to find the Croya that has additional networks and click the installation button. Now again, go back to install it and apply UI. Last is optional, but highly recommend it. Install and enable VAE to fix AI eyes problem and deforms problem. It's very easy. I just put the download link and the instruction link in the description down below. See, pretty easy, right? I hope I did it in under three minutes. Please comment below if you run into any installation issue and see error. I will do my best to check, comment, and help you solve your issue. Also, feel free to DM me on Instagram right here if you need quicker help. Now, we will need some trained AI LoRa model to define our style and also our 360 photo wrapping. Civit AI is one of those services. Just be careful, it's not safe for work. Just don't click those blurry images. Yo. Before you get lost here, go search 26C and download the Latent Labs 26C. This LoRa model allows you to create immersive 26 photo that is seamless. It is a must download if you want to create what I'm going to show you. I am also currently training my own models to provide to the community for download. So don't forget to subscribe if you are new here so you don't miss my free AI model. Download the latest safe tensor file into your automatic 11.11 model folder and then lower folder right here. Now go back to choose your style model. I will recommend downloading the Protogen X 5.8 sci-fi anime right here. Click here to download the Pico Tensor. It is a checkpoint file. So make sure to save it under Automatic 11.11 Web UI Model Stable Diffusion Folder right here. Now double click Web UI User.bat to open up Stable Diffusion. You see the Xformer is being loaded to improve your render speeds 10x time faster. Copy this URL and open a browser and paste in the URL. Hit enter should load you into Automatic 11.11 Web UI. Load the Protogen checkpoint we just downloaded. I prepare a prompt for you, so just copy and paste those in. If you are wondering how I come up with those prompts, the answer is I don't. I'm looking into other artwork I like using this model and I copy and paste them and then modify them to my liking. Check this button right here will show you the positive and negative prompt other artists are using. You can copy them or copy mine. Usually using my prompt should give you a really good starting point, but you can continue modifying it to your liking and make it even better. Check this button here and choose your 260 LoRa model. I highly recommend putting the LoRa model code at the beginning of the prompt like so to change anything AI generated into a 260 format. Now come here and open Control Net. Drop in the 260 photo you just took with your install 260 X3 or 1RS 1 inch right here. If you don't have one, I provide my to download link is in the description down below. Check enable preprocessor is depth and use the depth model here to generate the depth map for us. If you use install to see Titan or other stereoscopic to see camera that can generate its own depth map, leave the preprocessor to none and just pick the depth model right here. It will give you the best, most 
accurate result if you can use a actual 3D camera. Let's start with weight one, as I want to generate scene conformed to my 360 photo. Feel free to experiment here. The meters resolution, I turn it up to 1100 to give me more depth information. Okay, here are two very, very important options you need to pick. First is tiling here. Make sure you turn it on. It will make the photo tile from left edges to the right edges to create a seamless, no stitch line result. But that is not enough as your depth map will also generate stitch line. So go back to your control net right here and choose resize model, just resize and make the aspect ratio to two by one. We can go back and use a ruler A right here for now. 20 simple step, make sure the resolution is two by one ratio and get the largest resolution your GPU will allow you to go. For my NVIDIA RTX 3090, I can go 2048 by 1024. Now let's see what we can get by clicking the big generate button. Wow, the result is jaw dropping. Look at that. We turned my very messy, ugly house into a very classy, expensive room. My MetaQuest VR headset wall turned into a gemstone connection. My TV turned into a glass fireplace. Here is the funny part. My Pelican camera cases turn into a golden footrest. And outside, you see the green garden because I use the prompt text HDR. So we get HDR lighting. I really want to move into this room instead. AI create my dream house. Just imagine what you can do for your virtual tour client for house decoration. Now send this to Xtra. Let's do a free 4X time upscale using the R-ESR gang 4X plus. Click the photo icon, here you go. Your perfect AK-260 photo of your new house is ready to move in on Facebook 360 or virtual tour platform like 3D Vista or Metaport. The power of AI, crazy, right? Now we take a more complicated but practical example. We are going to transform a street in Ibiza, in front of the castle of Ibiza, into a movie scene in one of the Miyazaki-inspired animated film. In full 360, of course. So you can look around on Facebook 360 or inside a VR headset. It's always my childhood dream to be inside a Miyazaki movie. And now we can with precision and fine control. We are going to learn how to use AI in painting techniques to fix some of the low resolution key elements. One of the very common issue in current AI tech for high resolution 360 photo. Let's go to Civic AI and download a very popular model. This is by far one of the best model for outdoor 360 photography with a fantasy dreamlike style. Download it in your automatic 11.11 model folder and open Stable Diffusion web UI. Under Stable Diffusion checkpoint, pick the model you just download. Go ahead and copy and paste in this positive and negative prompt. I provide the prompt to help you to get my exact result, but please experiment and come up with your own style. Remember, never just copy and paste as an artist. Sample method right here, we use DPM++ SDE, Karas, and copy in my seat number right here. Remember to turn the tiling a very important step. Now open Control Net, drop in this Ibiza 260 photo I prepared for you. Download link is in the description down below. Then it's shot with the install 321RS1 in 260 camera on a 3 meter pole. It gives a great bird's eye view of the city and have a lot of detail to generate an excellent depth map. If you are using your own 360 photo, make sure to remove the tripod first. Object in Nadia will throw air in AI generation. Follow this tutorial right here on how to use Infinity Photo or Photoshop to remove your tripod leg. Go ahead and enable Control Net, Pre-Processor, Pick Depth, and Model Depth. Wait, I use one to keep close to my original composition. If you want to let AI to be more creative in the structure, you can use anything less than one. Turn the meters resolution to 1100 to get more depth information out of the photo. 
Resize model, make sure pick resize to avoid the stitch line in 360C. Make the aspect ratio to two by one. Come back here and maximize the width. For me, it's 2048. And the height is 1024 to keep two by one ratio. Up the count to four. Sampling step, keep it to 20 for now. Go ahead and hit generate. They all look really good, but I personally really love the second one with the Japanese writing and the golden hour look. So cinematic. Go ahead and save it as a PNG in case you want to use that. For large outdoor space, I found upping the step really helped to generate a better detailed 360 photo. So I'm going to up the step to 100 because my PC can handle it and try it again. Now, this will take a while, depending on your computer. So go ahead and go get a cup of coffee and come back to see the result. By the way, if you've used your own prompt, don't forget to pick the LoRa button to use the Lantern Lab 360 Photo LoRa and make sure it is at the beginning. If not, this will not work. Look at that, it looks extremely promising. Okay, now it's done. Oh my god, they all look really, really good. It's really hard to pick. I really love the second one here. The growing lantern street line, the street side, and the Japanese character riding on the temple. Oh wow. The only thing I don't really like is the girl right here. She looked like straight out from the movie Ring. <laughs> Creepy. Don't worry, we will fix that. Here is another problem in the current 260 AI generation art. Small detail in the distance is not so good. Look at the ring girl and her questionable friend. They are kind of close to the camera. I want them to have more detail, more resolution, and more definition. Here comes the second trick. We are going to use AI in painting to replace anything in the 260 photo you don't like. This step alone will separate you from amateur AI photographer to whole level AI photographer that can take your client's request to create and replace specific elements they need, aka control your AI generation art in fine detail. Go ahead and hit this button to send to in paint. Use the smaller brush to paint out the two girls. Copy and paste in the new prompt. Make sure you pick only Mast. So you are using the full AI power to fill in that small hole to generate a higher resolution replacement. This time we're trying to use random seed to see any fun result we can generate. Redo the step to 40 and set full count. Choose the restore phase as well, just in case the ring situation happen again. Okay, now we don't get the result we want. Mostly their feet got cut off, which is strange. So let's modify the prompt a little bit to see what else we can get. AI art generation is all about patience, trial and error. So please keep experimenting if you don't find the result you want. So by bringing down the denoise string to 0.5, we are finally getting what we want. I really like this one. Lots of detail and the two girls is walking away from the camera. So we again send this to in painting to continue replace other elements in 360 photos. Like right here, the two tiny characters going up the temple. Refresh the paintbrush and paint the character one by one to replace them. Oh, I really like this one now. It is generated exactly what I need. Japanese girl with red hair. I will paint this one. Next, let's generate a kid wearing a Totoro outfit next to her. Look at that, this is getting even better and better. It is like Miyazaki in my AI engine and helping me to make my vision come to life. When you find the AI holy grail, that feeling is just amazing. After that, I did more fixing and in painting. One thing that is very common is signs with text and writing in it. Like right here, we need to use in painting to upscale it and make it more believable. This is an extra tip for those hunting for the best image quality output. Then I decided to use AI to in paint to add the Fuji mountain in the background to make it more Japan. Replace the car to 
more a car as before it is too low resolution and I replaced the ugly bush right here into kimchi my Shiba Ninyu I mean why not let's have some fun as it is AI kimchi need to be in every of my 360 photos I literally have a train lower model of kimchi it is how much I love my dog now I'm gonna send this to extra for free AI upscale the image is still too small for Facebook 360 photos or virtual tour in the scale we pick the r ESR Gang 4X plus Anime 6B as this is a faithful anime recreation. Upscale to 4 times into 8K. The result is a little bit over sharpened. The free 2 can only get you so far. So instead, we are going to use Topaz Photo AI. It is a very powerful AI tool and check out the link down below if you are interested. Open Topaz Photo AI and drop in the AI photo before upscaling. So by playing around the setting, I found 4 times upscale with graphic setting give me the best result without too much artifacts. I also turned down the remove blur and noise suppression as there is no blur or noise in an oil painting. Run it out and we are ready to touch up in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Touch up is a must for any professional photographer or artist. AI is not perfect without humans to fix the air at least for now. Open Affinity Photo 2 here and bring in our final upscaled AK 260 photo. Go to Layer, Live Projection, Eco Rectangular Projections, move to the Nadia, the bottom of your image. Use AI in Paint Brush 2 right here. Make a big soft circle to paint out the pinch point. Now touch up to remove the brushes. Next, pan to the ceiling. See the sky pinch right here? We are going to use the same in painting brush tool to fix the sky. Now pick the cursor tool again, edit, light projection, look around the 260 photo, find any imperfection and fix it too. This is just for a Facebook upload so I did not spend much time but for a client work I usually spend hours on fixing everything. Go back to layer, light projection and remove projection, then go right back in again. This time, we are leveling the 260 photo and set the center point for Facebook 260 publishing. AI sometimes make your 260 photo tilted, not level. This is how you fix it in post. Set the heading first for where you want the image to face. Then, Michael adjust the straightened value right here until you see your image is level. Hit the button center coordination system. Last step is to remove the projection back to that long view. Output as a JPEG image in 8K. I have more in-depth tutorials on both Photoshop or Affinity Photo right here on 260 Photo TouchUp. So go check them out if you need more help. Next, download and open EXIF Fixer, a free tool to prep your image for Facebook upload. Download link is in the description down below. You can simply drop the photo into the tool and click Add Metadata. Go to your Facebook page right now and drop in that 260 photo. Facebook now know this is a 260 photo. If you don't see this 260 icon, it is either your aspect ratio is not 2 by 1 or you forgot to inject metadata using EXIF Fixer. Redo the last step again. You can click Edit and look around in Facebook. Set the heading again here before publishing. Always review your photo first before publishing. Republishing will hurt your discovery stacks. Put in the description and post on Facebook. Now share your hard work on social media and don't forget to tag me so I can see your creation as well. Posting on Facebook also allow you to view and be in your 260 photo within MetaQuest 2 VR headset. See it in VR is a completely next level and let's learn how to do that next. Okay, now let me show you how to view and be in the AI360 photo you just created on this tutorial. We are using the Oculus MetaQuest Pro right here, but you can feel free to use the MetaQuest 2 or any other VR headset of your choice. This is actually cheaper. Since you already upload your photo on Facebook 360, so it's actually easier to just use the Facebook app right here or 
the MetaQuest browser right here. Let me use the browser to show you how easy it is. So go into the browser. So when you open a browser, just hit the Facebook icon right here. We'll go to the Facebook URL. So for you, you just input your Facebook URL right here and go into that photo. If you want to see my photo, I actually upload a lot of your photo on the MetaQuest on Facebook. So go type in my URL, 360creator. I will just, in the browser, if you scroll down, you should see my photo I just post right here. See? And if you pay attention right here, you see right here, say view in VR, that's the button you hit. When you hit that, it should ask you, are you allowed you to view it in VR? And immediately drop you into the world you just created in 360. Look at that. That is the AI photo we just created. You can look around, look behind you, look at the girl right there. That's amazing. I do see a little stitch line right here. Maybe it's a Facebook issue. So let me see if we can fix that and view that in a Facebook app instead. And this time, I'm gonna view it on the Facebook app. So I go into the Facebook app beta right here. It just drop me into my page. So go back to the same photo right here. See, you say view in VR, go hit that. Oh, the line is still there, strange. If you don't want your photo to be published and you don't want to go to the hassle to upload it on Facebook, you just want to view it in your local device with your friend and family, it's an easy way to do that. First, put your photo under the movie folders or the download folders by plugging into your MetaQuest into your PC or your Mac and load the photo into the movie folder or the download folders. And then you can just go in right here, go to TV right here, TV icon right here, we open MetaQuest TV. Go to your media, and then you scroll down, say on devices, that photo is there already. So go ahead and hit that. Now the photo is loaded. Again, see the stitch line is gone. So I think it's uh, Facebook app have current issue right there to create a stitch line. But if you look at inside a local hard drive in your local headset, you can look around, it's in full 8K, super high resolution. You see kimchi right here. Uh, Super high resolution 360 photo right there, and there's no stitch line, fully immersive, and that's how you can view your photo without internet and without uploading on Facebook and go to all the hassle. Go watch directly inside VR headset. But I gotta teach you the next technique to even make it fancier. We can add background music, animation, and turn all your 360 photo into a video slideshow inside the Mirror Quest 2 for a fully VR experience. Let me show you how to do that. To do that, you need a third-party app called Immerse Gallery right here. It's not free, but it's very affordable. So go ahead and open it. And this is a very powerful app that allows you to view all kinds of photos. Let me turn on the music so it's not annoying. So the app can directly load your local gallery. If you put your photo under download folder, it's actually already loaded in the background. It's really cool. May I just show you what I can do with the app? So I can hit modify image. I want to, for recording purposes, I don't want to add any background music, but I can add special effects, like put some bird on it. And you can create an automatic slideshow right here. If you have more than two, three, or four, or five, 260 photos generated by AI, you can put an automatic, automatic image switching to create a side slideshow right here. And now if you go back to the photo right here, 260, look around. There's a bird flying around. Look at that, you see the bird? Birds flying around in Miyazaki world. Oh, this is so cool. I can add music, I can add slides. So uh, let's, let's, let's play around. Oh, look, oh my God, we just did. Uh, if you hit the button right here, you can even add floating 3D star in a 2D mono photo. Look at that special effect. I just add bird heart. So now I have sound effects. I have butterfly flying the meadow in the Miyazaki world, the kimchi right here, and you continue add some star heart everywhere. Now I add snow effects. So now Miyazaki world is snowing. Look at that. This is amazing. I can add heart around it. The kimchi right there. 
and it's snowing i can make me a zaki was snowing it's really relaxing and hear nature sound uh the world is snowing and create a fully immersive 3d 3d 360 experience with the Miyazaki word and that's how you do it it's amazing thank you so much for watching this very very in-depth class on how to use ai to generate 360 concept art or immersive photo experience we are just covering the tip of the iceberg ai is very powerful and New development in the space is happening every single day. This tutorial wouldn't be possible thanks to other AI YouTubers' research. I want to give a special shout out to Oliver, sorry to butcher your name, Sebastian Cram, Andrew Hitchelton, Karen Exchange, BDFX from Google, Quarter Crew, the list can go on. Most of them don't know me yet, but they are my heroes and a lot smaller than me in AI research and AI art generation. I highly recommend to go check them out. And if you just want to know AI in the field of immersive media creation, to see photo or video coming up, then please subscribe to this awesome YouTube channel and hit the notification bell and share this video on your social media. I promise more AI superpower is coming on this channel that you have not seen anywhere else on the internet. And I'm very, very excited to share with you in my next tutorials. Until then, stay creative, my friends.